This is part three of the reply of Terry Parker to the Crown submissions on the Spetkopoulos case, which is arguing that the prohibition on marijuana has been valid, invalid for the past six years, like it had been invalid for the two years earlier when we made him drop the charges against 4,000 people. So, part three, enjoy. 36. However, on March 19th, the Federal Court of Appeal granted a stay pending appeal of the trial's uh, judgment in Svetkopoulos. The Crown correctly asserts that due to the stay, the declaration that Section 4.1 of the MMAR regulations, 41.1, is unconstitutional, has no effect until the appeal is disposed of. The ap applicant replies that its reasoning is persuasive and should be nevertheless applied. So basically, they know that the Svetkopoulos decision happened, but because it's been stayed upon the appeal, the Crown said, well, you can't decide on it yet. You can't take it into account. And Justice Roundway, therefore, didn't. Now, our Crown knows that the Svetkopoulos decision has come down, so they shouldn't be coming at us with a decision out of a judge before it happened, claiming that he wasn't going to take it into account. Anyway, that's what the Crown has done here. So I find it there. The so the applicant now applies it. It's a reasoning is persuasive. Come on now, the MMA R forty one. It's going to win. You know, I mean, the law should be dead. And I reject the applicant's submission for these reasons. Long no good. Svetkopulo stayed. That the Svetkopulos decision is based on a factual finding that the current system under the MMAR and the supply policy does not adequately meet the needs of medical marijuana users, but the judgment does not explain the evidence supporting the finding. The judgment mentions there's a holding 20% of the ATP holders were obtaining marijuana from the government supplier, but does not explain the inference drawn from this fact and provides no other facts to support the finding that many medical marijuana users were forced to obtain a drug illegally. Applicant's argument based on Svetkopulos requires proof the judge wants to hear the whole Svetkopoulos case personally. Quite cool as that. Three federal court of appeal judges aren't enough. He wants it all in front of him too. There is no evidence before me of access problems. And the guy said, hey, Svetkopoulos said 411 don't work. And I guess he didn't know about Barron yet, 54-1 not working. But he did point out 411 ain't working. B1 isn't working. So there is no evidence before me of access problems. There would have to be an evidentiary basis before I could consider an application based on the reasoning in Svetkopoulos. So Svetkopoulos didn't happen. You've got to prove it all again, is what this judge said. And it stayed, so he doesn't have to worry about it anyway, he thinks. So Justice Roundwave ruled the CDSA was not shorted out by a flaw in the MMAR, not because he disagreed with Svetkopoulos' malfunction, but because he was bound by the Cubby ruling that the MMAR were not flawed because Cubby lacked the necessary factual basis to prove they were. Cubby had shown no evidence of flaws in the MMAR, so he was bound to conclude that there were none. 36, he continues, however, whether or not Svetkopoulos is wrongly decided as the Crown submits, it did not conclude that Section 4.1 of the CDSA is invalid, the prohibition, and we go because paid enough Professor Allen Young did not ask. So R, the judge of the federal court has the power to make declarations, and deputy judge declared Section 41 of the regs to be of no force and effect. Even if I felt able to apply Svetkopoulos without a factual context and agreed with its conclusions, the result would not be a finding that Section 4.1 is invalid. According to JP precedent, it should be, except that Professor Alan Young did not ask Pedna again. Uh, 44 of his judgment, I therefore conclude that Section 4.1 of the CDSA is constitutionally valid for the following reasons. I'm bound by the Court of Appeal decision in Cubby, which held that 4.1 is constitutionally valid. I'm also, we could not see. I'm also uh, not bound by the federal court in Svetkopoulos, which is also under appeal and has been stayed pending appeal. The facts necessary for me to apply its reasoning have not been proven in this application. So, we argue Justice Roundwaith rejects Long because the reasoning is no good, and rejects Svetkopoulos because it stayed. And rather than rely on the informed judgments made on the evidence of malfunction in the federal legislation by the Federal Court of Appeal, Roundway J, provincial judge, chooses to be bound by the uninformed judgment by his B.C. Court of Appeal that no evidence of malfunction is evidence of no malfunction. 
found in the Svetko, uh, that they found in the Svetko Pulos while being bound by no evidence of MMAR malfunction found in Cubby, like choosing to keep his eyes closed. Moreover, it does not conclude that Section 41 is invalid. And Ron Waith, Provincial Court Judge, and we go Pagna again. The court has failed to show that the Polzer ruling rejected Svetkopoulos on its merits. It did not deal with them on its merits. He said so. Our versus Baron. So, finally, the, the appellant suggests that the recent decision of Justice Konigsberg, a release without reason, supports his contention that the physician as gatekeeper model is unconstitutional. Quite the opposite is true. Ten. Well, it is clear from the following passage from Madam Justice Konigsberg's reasons, issued on April 7, 2009, that the requirement that a physician authorize a person's use of marijuana for medical purposes is not a barrier to access. Paragraph 94. And now we say appellant never raised a, quote, physician as gatekeeper, unquote, issue. From paragraphs 94 to 97. Appellant raised paragraph 127 about a flaw in the grower section, not the doctor section. 127, adopting the reasoning in Hetzig and Svetkopoulos, and remember, she backs up Svetkopoulos too, about the flaw in section 41. Uh, I find section 41B1 and 541 of the MMAR contrary to section seven of the charter. So appellant is not arguing that having his family doctor supervise medication is a barrier. He's arguing that the failure to make his doctor participate in the MMAR is, with only one in 60 doctors in Ontario participate. Though there may have been no evidence that lack of physician participation was a barrier to access, that is not evidence that lack of physician participation is no barrier to Terry Parker's access with odds of 60 to 1 in Ontario. We raised the barren, unsighted, the Barron decision, to show that a second flaw had been judicially discovered in Section 54.1 of the MMAR, and the Crown's only rebuttal is to say it's not too hard to find a doctor. Recap. Repeated throughout is the paid notion that the failure of court clutch Ganja Gilligan Young to ask that the analogy be made between the Parker two years of invalidity and the Svetkopoulos six years means the link cannot be made by a less klutzy advocate. 48. Repeated throughout is the notion that no evidence of malfunction equals evidence of no malfunction. 100 courts finding no evidence of flaw because they looked in the wrong place or had their eyes closed, is not evidence of no malfunction, especially when other courts are already pointing them out and condemned them in the right place. This court should trust not the judges who saw no evidence of failure, but the judges who saw evidence of failure presented by the victims. 49. R versus Long did not address whether Svetkopoulos invalidates Section 4 of the CDSA. And, of course, we know why. We agree. And, of course, Polzer did not address whether Svetkopoulos invalidates Section 4 of the CDSA. And R versus Barron did declare a second flaw, which the Crown did not address. And appellant asks the court to construe the Federal Court of Appeals decision in Svetkopoulos as creating a similar period of retrospective invalidity dating back to December the 3rd, 2003, the date that Section 41B1 was reintroduced into the MMAR, pursuant to the Court of Appeal in R versus JP, which ruled that the combined effect of Parker and Hitzig meant there was no constitutionally valid marijuana possession offense between July 31st, 2001 and October 7th, 2003, the Parker period, the date the MMAR were constitutionally rectified by the decision in Hitzig dated at Brantford on June 9th, 2009, and our request is the Crown's own most feared effect statement. Agent for the appellant, John Turmel. So that's it. That's the whole Terry Parker case with every shot we got at this evil prohibition before a young judge, Justice Tullock, of the Ontario Superior Court, and uh, he gave the case a good listen and if anyone is going to change the law, it's going to be this one, I hope. 
and I would be honored to defend his decision to the top. So let's hope that he's an innovator, he's a leader, and not a follower judge, because it would be nice to end this nightmare once and for all. So I'm John the MedPod Engineer, hoping that this is the beginning of the end for the prohibition against the greatest medicinal plant herb on the planet.